So this, this covering cherub was protecting this holy mountain of God. He was protecting these stones of fire. And the word stones in Hebrew has to do with procreative stones. The word stones has to do with the testicles of a man in, in Hebrew in the Bible. And so these, these were the seeds of life that were to come forth in, in time and be born. These were you and me up here in the mountain of God. And Lucifer was protecting him. Protecting him from what? I don't know exactly, but I know these other angels were still, you know, well, they weren't loose, but they were still, you know, they were still, God wouldn't put him as a protecting cherubim. A cherubim's a warrior angel. He was protecting them from something. Someday we'll understand what he was protecting them from. It's one of my questions. But anyway, he walked up and down in the midst of them. He, he, he talked with them. He, he had communion with them. He, he knew them. And then he said, Thou wast perfect. In thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Okay? The word iniquity means to distort. It means to misstate. It means uh, to deform. It means to pervert. It means to misrepresent. It means to change the usual appearance. So at some point, something happened to Lucifer. He was perfect. He was full of wisdom. He was beautiful. He was an anointed cherub, and the anointed here means anointed with the Holy Ghost, deep anointing of the Holy Ghost. He could sing, he could, he could lead the angelic choir in all of this music, and, and angelic band and all of its music, and he was, he was tremendously powerful. But at one point, something happened. And this is a warning to us that we better be careful, because if he could fall, we can fall. And here he was, perfect, and yet perversion, something something twisted inside of him. And it has to do with the taproot, we'll see in just a minute. It twisted, and it, it, it caused him then to sin tremendously. And by the multitude of thy merchandise, and the word merchandise means trading and trafficking. He wasn't a drug trafficker. <laughs> he was trafficking himself. He walked up and down in the midst of these Stones of fire trying to sell himself to these seeds. Telling them, follow me. Don't follow God. Look at the Son of God. He's just a little tiny soul and spirit over here. He doesn't even have a body. Look at my beautiful body. Look at my beautiful covering. Come and follow me. I'll give you power when you get down on earth. God's going to give you suffering. He's going he's to make you go through a lot of, a lot of troubles and trials. And, and I'm going to give you pleasure. And I'm going to give you money. And I'm going to give you fame. And I'm going to give you fortune. Follow me, and I'll give you all of this. Okay? And then what happened at this point, a lot of the stones of fire followed Lucifer. They chose him. And we could say 99.9% .9 of them probably did. Because all we have to do is look around us to see how many are following God today. And you can tell how many chose against God and chose Lucifer at that point. Okay? Okay? And if we go, um, we'll come back to Lucifer in a minute, but let's go to Romans. Romans 8. <clears throat> there's a, this is, I mean, there's Bible verses. I can give you Bible verses for two hours to prove that we existed back here. And I'll give you one or two real quick ones so you can just see it. But here in Romans 8, verse um, 29, or verse 28, it says, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Mm -hmm. Okay? To them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow. Mm -hmm. And this word in Greek means know beforehand no way back before the creations no back before we existed on this earth for no means ancient times doesn't mean this life it means back here for those that he did for no he also did predestinate okay now the word no means to know by uh, ascertain by seeing and the word no in the Bible has to do with a marriage relationship, a union, okay? So the ones that God 
had a union with, the ones that he, he knew beforehand, he predestinated them. Okay? Now, God in this life, right now, God says, I know, I know Donna, I know Darla, I know uh, Evelyn, I know Andre, I know Brian, I know Mark. When does he say, I know you? I have joined myself to you. When does he do that in this life? When you get saved. When you get saved. When you choose him. Okay? So if here he says he knew us, he knew some beforehand, that means we had to have chosen him for him to say, I know you. Because he's not going to choose us and force us into a relationship. So we can take our experience now and apply it because God's principles don't change. It'll be the same in eternity. In the creations to come, people will still have to choose him for him to choose them. Okay? So if we have to choose him now for him to say, I know you, then it means that for him to say, I knew you back beforehand, that we had to have chosen him back there. So the ones that he knew that he had a union with back before, back here in the... In the in, Back before time, he said, I predestinated. And the word predestinate means simply to put a fence around. The word predestinate means put a fence around. And this fence was his assurance to these the few seeds that chose to stay with God that they would come down through time, fall into sin, accept sin, become sinners, but he... He, he said, I will, by my, by, by my will, <laughs> by God's whole being, he said, I will make sure that you accept my son as your savior and that you grow up in stature and that you make it back here to my presence that you came out of. So that predestination is our assurance that we will get back. Uh-huh. Well, what happened to the backsliders? You know, the people that, that do accept him, but then somewhere down the line they backslide. Now, are they going to, uh, they, they're pretty much going to get back too, though, before he comes or before they die? Or leave his body? They, choose. they have to choose. Have it, to it all boils down to our free will choice. The backsliders are going to have to choose again. And if they're, a, if they're a square seed, they have this fence around them, and it's just a term we use. If they're a square seed, God's going to put so much pressure on them that they're going to bend their knees and they're going to scream out, God, I'm sorry, I come back to you and I'm going to run on with all my might. If they're, if they're a round seed, it's going to be harder because they are, they've, voted, they've voted against God already once. And down here they've made a lot of choices, a lot of choices. In the beginning, mm -hmm. before time, they uh -huh. voted against them. And they've... And they've in the beginning. But then how do they come down here and then... Uh, confess Jesus and walk with him for a while but then maybe something in life comes and you know turn him around mm -hmm. you know they can still they can still do that the round uh -huh. exactly these round ones have a have a choice in life to accept Jesus or reject Jesus the square ones in this life have a choice to accept Jesus or reject Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the pivot point. He's the, he's the, his blood covers all the way back over the, all creations. Okay? He's, he came in the end time and his blood covers all the way back. So right now, square or round, we have a choice to accept him. Okay? The only, the only advantage of having a fence around us is that we never fit in with the world. Uh, you know... I drank a little bit and I ran a, not, I, well, parties and smoked and all this sort of, but I didn't feel right. I didn't, I didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. It's like trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole or a round peg in a square hole. It just, just didn't fit in. And, and a lot of, a lot of people that really went wild in, in, in this life, drugs and, and girls or, or men or, it was, it, when they finally come to this message, they, they give their testimony and said, I, it, like I'd run into a wall. It's like I'd, I'd, I'd hit here and I, I couldn't go very far. I couldn't go any farther. It's like God had a, a limit around me of how much I could do. And so, so God has, has put this fence around some people. Now whether we have it or don't have it, 
I mean, you can basically tell. If you're here to Bible study, you can be pretty good, pretty well sure that you, you've got some, some, some fence around you. And once, once a round one gets saved, then God starts building the fence. He starts squaring them up so that they can run on and grow up into what he predestinated them to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he said, I'm going to put a fence around you and I'm going to make sure you come and grow up in the stature of Jesus Christ, my son. Okay? And so here we made a choice. Here's another. Back in eternity, God and his son, we chose in spirit and soul. Okay, we existed. I'll show you those verses. Then we came down into Adam. And the Bible says all of us sinned. We were all born in sin. In Adam, all of us chose against God. Even the square seeds chose against God. Because, well, it's a whole long thing. We, we had a reason why, okay? And then we've been coming down through our forefathers' loins. You all, you all have heard of people that have been hypnotized and they go back and they say, you know, that they, they lived in another life and they were in England in, in the year 1400 and something and they've, all they're doing is looking back through the loins of their forefathers in their subconscious mind to seeing the, the, the choices that they made coming down through those loins. So we made a, we made a choice like, like some of mine were Vikings and maybe they were pirates. I chose to sin with them when they went out on their drunken, drunken raids. I chose against or for that activity when I was in the loins of my whatever grandfather way back there. Okay? And, and down in England, maybe some of them were thieves in, in the Middle Ages and, and this type of thing. And I, were, I was in these loins and I chose for or against sin, for or against sin, for or against sin, for or against sin, for or against sin. So that when I finally come out and am born here in the body, I already have a track record before God of choices and this is why God is justified in a lot of things that he does in taking little babies and in, in, in cutting off lives before oh well he never had a chance to live and all of this and how how unjust God is well God's looking at all of this and all the way back into eternity so there's there's a lot of there's a lot that, that goes on has gone on down here through these loins and out here but out here the choice I make in this one body that I have because I'm giving only one body. This is not reincarnation. I've, given, I've been given one body. And in this body, I make my final choice. And my choice now, through Jesus Christ, can wipe out all of my evil choices and my bad choices. And all of these choices are our midnight will. These are the things that we laid into our midnight will as we came down through. And these are the things that we're having to battle right now that we don't even realize where they're coming from. You all have heard about the midnight will. Mm -hmm. So these are, the, these are the cocoons that we laid in and we froze in as we came down through these loins. Some of them in this life from baby, babyhood. Mm -hmm. Some of them were laid in, but a lot of them down here. Just like children are born, they're already selfish. They already can lie and sneak mm -hmm. automatically. And some of them more than others. More than others, yeah, mm -hmm. but that nature is pretty much different. Uh -huh. And then other babies are just so docile and so soft and, and might be the same parents. And, and they're just complete opposites because of, because of their choices back here. There's a Bible verse that says, Before they came into the world, Esau I hated and Jacob I loved. Before they could sin in this life. Why? Because they'd already made a lot of choices. And Jacob had chosen for God and Esau had chosen against God. Time after time after time after time after time after time after time. After time. Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of Bible verses. Let's go to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. I can run some off at home, or if there's. Yeah. If this explains this lesson here explains so many things. When we were back here in eternity, God God showed us everything that was going to happen to us down here in life. We, can't we, and we can't remember it. This veil here. When we're born, this veil comes down. Before this veil comes down, we're still conscious of all of this. But the minute we come out and... Ah, 
give our first breath, it starts coming down anyway. I think babies still have a little bit of a little bit of consciousness, but but the more they become like the umbilical cord cuts it all off. Mm-hmm. It's like the you know, you're no longer dependent on that. Mm-hmm. That parent, your your own, you know, that that umbilical cord, that source of life mm-hmm. is cut off. Mm-hmm. And it's seared whatever I mean, you don't need that parent. Whatever you your breath is your own breath now. You, you know, it's like you, whatever's in there is in there. It's seared in mm-hmm. until God re- takes it out. Mm-hmm. Because by that time, when you cut that off, that's that umbilical cord. You can't reattach it. it you know, mm-hmm. it's not going to have the same effect. So it's seared. And God does it for two reasons. Because if we knew all of the bad choices back here, we'd give up the ghost. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, well, and if we made all good well, choices, I know that's right. and if we made all good choices, we'd be so proud and. and yeah, <laughs> Nobody could stand this, and we'd lose out the same way. Pride, huh? Pride. What's that ninety percent for? Okay, this ninety percent we chose with ninety percent of our mind, ninety percent of our being, was in our choices back here. And in this life, even medically, we only use ten percent of our brain. Uh huh. Doctor, they tell you that. Where's the other ninety? When did we use the ninety? What's the ninety for? We've used a lot of it. Was already back here, and what we're doing now is using this this tithe of our being to the ten percent. I remember in medical school once talking. I was in I was in endocrinology, and I stopped the one of my doctor teachers in the hall, and I said, Doctor, you know, if we if we gave them more thyroid, and if we did this and this, couldn't we open up? that 10% so that a person could think more and he said no it can't be done it's it's that that amount and there's nothing that can be done about it so so with this but with this 10% that's why this is so important our choices in this life are so important the, the, uh uh-huh, this makes us complete and it can wipe out every bad choice we made back here yeah I need that yeah, that is good. That's an excellent diagram. Because, mm-hmm. And if we goof up here, it just adds on. Nine, ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Well, that, 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 that ten percent has a lot to do with a lot of things. Yeah. I can make it on that team. Make or break you. Mm-hmm. It'll make you or break you. Give it all you got, huh? And it's a, and in another sense, it's the last. It's the last bit before it's all over. We've, all, we've already done 90%. We've already run 90% of our, tra- of our trail. We've already come 90% of our road. 90% of our journey is almost finished, already finished. And all we have is 10%, and even that's coming down a little bit less. Supposedly, Indians use a different proportion of their mind than what we do. They're human beings just like us. Yeah, but it's you mean the Hindu Indians? No, the American Indians. And Chinese, why they so small? What percent they come from? Origin of the races, that's the difference. Yeah, they came through Abraham. They, they have the wisdom of Abraham. American. That's why the Jews got so good and prosperous. You know, they make good decisions. Mm-hmm. They might use another part, but it's still so part of this ten percent. Why? Why would their part be different than ours? I, I mean, medically, I've never heard anything like that. They, they might, they might be more inclined towards nature, understand nature more, something like that. They just have more maybe a mm-hmm. more gray matter than we do, huh? Yeah. But they, I mean, they couldn't build a, a spacecraft. So, I mean, it just, it's just the way they are. But their brain is still just the 10%. Because they're human beings just like everybody else. Okay? Um, and, and God showed us all of this. We chose all of this. We chose where we were going to be born. We chose who was to be our mother. Who was to be our father? Chose husbands, we chose wives, oh, we, we chose. Yep. Doctor Cox, you know we really need to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying we just need to go to know that we did make these choices because sometimes we get upset. I, I, wait, I ain't choose this. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I ain't choose this. I, I, I did not choose this. You know, we really did. Yep. One, one, one 
one thing to make it real simple that we knew about all of this how many of you have been someplace that you've never been before and you said I've been there but no way you could have been there because mm -hmm. time hadn't allowed you to be there uh -huh. you remember something uh -huh. or saying something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what God and what God does he lifts the veil just real quick and let you see remember I told you and then he puts the veil down again you're right on track and then he puts the veil down he lets us remember what he told us back here what we saw what we were going to be doing at such and such a date mm -hmm. so it's not reincarnation it's not other existences it's not all of this Hindu gobbledygook it's not all this new age stuff it's not you know some some other life that we lived in in somebody's other soul or body or something mm -hmm. it's just it, God just lifts that veil and lets us remember what, what we already signed up for <laughs> what we'd already agreed to <laughs> and showed us look you're right on let's go to Jeremiah 1 Jeremiah chapter 1 and somebody wants to copy all these Bible verses afterwards, you can. You can look at them. It's in Spanish, but you can understand it. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. We saw, we chose our parents, we chose our husband, we chose our nationality. We chose to live in Las Vegas or L.A. or South Central or uh, some people cho chose. <laughs> if you hadn't have chosen to come here, you wouldn't have heard the message. We chose all of this because back here with our eyes open, let me explain, back here with our eyes open looking all the way through to eternity future, we saw what these choices were going to get us out here. And we saw that this was just a little drop in time to reach what we wanted out here which is the new city and the bride and so we chose the suffering we chose the pain we chose the, the problems and difficulties and aches and, and horrors because we knew that if we lifted up God's name and if we stayed true to Jesus Christ through it all that we would gain stature and we would be able to go into the bride not by gift but by stature in the end and also help others. We probably saw that, uh, that those around that we would be able to minister to and encourage. Mm -hmm. you think so? That's part of it. Part of it. Mm -hmm. But basically, basically, our, our eye back there was on Jesus Christ and okay. what we could what we could attain in Him. Oh, and we so, even saw our, our end, just as the Lord saw our end. Mm -hmm. He took us and showed us the new city. So he, uh, that's why they say our beginning is the same as our end. Our great, uh, our Right. If we make the right choices in between, the end is like the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is that a no, it's a, it's just a principle of God. Oh, okay. If we start out right, we'll end up right. <coughs> Jeremiah one five, real quick, it says, God is talking to Jeremiah, mm -hmm. and He says, "Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee." Before you were even conceived in your mother's belly, I knew you. You existed, and I knew you. You see that? And then it says, And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And God isn't going to sanctify and ordain a mass of tissue, an inanimate mass of tissue inside of a woman's womb. He's going to anoint a living vessel that can choose and say yes I accept the mantle I accept the anointing I'm going to do it Lord so before before he was even conceived God knew him God knew us back there in eternity past he, he joined to us and again it means union it means ascertained by seeing it doesn't mean just oh well I think someday I'm going to create a, a Brian or someday I'm going to create a Mark down there on earth and he's going to live in such and such it doesn't mean it like that it means looking straight at the souls and the spirits of, of, of all of us back there. He knew us. Um, let's go to Hebrews. <clears throat> Hebrews. 
Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews 4. Excuse me, Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. I've got this on the computer. All I have to do is run it off. Unless y'all can make a copy between now and tomorrow. Probably about noon. Abraham. Isaac. Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. I won't put 12 of them. One of these sons was Levi. And out of Levi came the priesthood. And the priests received the tithes. And one of the things I almost taught on tonight was tithes. It has to do with the first, the first, um, what, delight. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the first delight. The tithes in the Old Testament were given to the priesthood, and the priesthood came down through Levi. Okay, look what it says here. It says in verse 9, And as I may so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes, where? In Abraham. Who was Abraham as far as Levi was concerned? Great, great grandfather. Uh -huh. Levi was a little seed back over here in Abraham. And it says he paid tithes. So that means intelligence. That means choice. That means understanding. It means knowing what the tithe was, why it was important. And so when Abraham put forth his hand to pay the tithe, Levi said, I choose to pay tithes with, a, with, my, with my father, great, for my great-grandfather. I choose to pay tithes with Abraham because it says for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him so we chose there too right mm -hmm. well if we were in Abraham we chose, yeah. if we came down through Abraham I don't know who we came through who all we came down through mm -hmm. we were all in Noah mm -hmm. why destroyed mm -hmm. so if we weren't in Noah we wouldn't be here so we were in the flood So this is a verse to prove that we came down through the loins. He was still, he was in Abraham. He was still in the loins of his father. And he chose. He had a conscious understanding of what was going on. Okay. Romans 9, 11 to 13 is Jacob and Esau that I mentioned a while ago. If you want to write that one down. Romans 9, 11 to 13. What does that mean? Esau I hated and Jacob I loved before they even came into the world. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 8 and we'll finish with this one. Proverbs what? Proverbs 8. Psalms. Proverbs. Proverbs 8. And this part here is telling of the, cre the, not creation, the birth of the Son of God. When he was born, he's called wisdom here. But it's not real wisdom because if God had to birth wisdom, at some point he wasn't wise. So this is it's talking of his Son. In Jesus Christ was placed all the wisdom of God. Okay? So it said, verse 22, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. And I was set up from the beginning, everlasting before the earth was. When there was no depth, when there weren't any oceans, I was brought forth. When there were still no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. And this word brought forth means to be birthed, to come out in form of a spiral, to be, to be born. Brought forth, verse 25. And then it goes on talking again a little bit farther down. It says about being brought forth again. And then in verse 30 it says, Then I was by him 
All of this is saying before the, all of these things, before creation, before the mountains, before the hills, before the oceans, before any of this creation, I was by him, Jesus, uh, the Son of God, I was brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Verse 31, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with who? Amen. How could he delight before creation in the sons of men if the sons of men didn't exist? The delight means he walked with them, laughed with them, yeah. enjoyed them. So while Lucifer was walking up and down in the stones of fire, the Son of God was too. He delighted in us at that point before creation. So there's a lot of Bible verses. These are just a few. Paul's writings has a lot uh, talking about pre, pre-knowledge and pre-existence and and every time I go over this, I, I'm, I'm, it just impresses on me all over again God's tremendous plan for our life. We're not just here, just the, all of a sudden I plop on the earth and see what I can do with my life and all it is is suffering and problems and trials and all the, you know, everything that goes on now, nowadays, drive-bys and drugs and homosexuals and these rights and that right and I have to go to school and I don't want to go to school and don't like my teacher and all these things. It, but all of this is, is leading us to a, to a final point. And God's hand is on us and God's hand is leading and directing. Because when we sign that contract, if I could put it that way up there before we came down, he's going to keep that contract. He swore by himself to keep that contract and to bring us down through here and to fulfill everything that, that we decided on or that we told him he could do to us and for us to get us up that holy hill on the other side and not get us there just by gift, plop, but to get us there with stature, with a knowledge of Jesus Christ that we could only gain down here in this life. Only here we can know his redemption, only here we can know his, his mercy, only through sin mm-hmm. and having been forgiven can we know areas of his, of his being that you couldn't know unless you'd fallen into sin. So, so some people signed that contract back right then and say, you know, I, I don't want to make it to the new city, but I want to come through, and I want to come into the earth mm-hmm. to live. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't, I don't want no parts of heaven or the new earth or the new city. Mm-hmm. They I just want to come down and sin and get my pleasure through Lucifer and all that I can get. And those were the round seeds. And others, others chose to come down and find Jesus as their Savior, but they saw the suffering and everything that would be that would be needed to take out this midnight will to take out these wrong choices, to take out all of this, this trash inside of us. And they said, no, just, just, I, I just want to be saved, but I don't want to have to grow up. Mm-hmm. And they chose, they chose lesser statures. Mm-hmm. That's why some people are just happy being Methodists and just happy being, you know, go to church on Sunday and, and that's it. And they're saved. And they'll, go, they'll go to God's heaven, but they won't make it to the new city. Because all, it, all, it all boils down to us. It's not God predestination is not God says okay you're going to you're going to new heavens new earth new city 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 it wouldn't be just and fair he he leaves it to us exactly and the predestination just assures those few that chose him that he was going to he was going to bring them through and it does not exclude the others because the others have exactly the same chance is that why you said that we are, that the, the Lord Jesus Christ has been tempted as we are in our hearts? Because we chose way back then, he chose way back then, and he chose to go all the way through. And looking at the suffering that he would go on, he was still able to keep that vision where we were not able in eternity past to keep the same vision that the son is able to see. He saw everything. He saw his end. Who? The son? The son did. So did we. But I'm saying right now, but we can't we remember, can't remember mm-hmm. us seeing that, you know, that we remember seeing our end, but by principle, by what we're learning, we know that we can, we have seen our mm-hmm. end, but he saw his end, and he saw it through his time of trials and mm-hmm. testing. He saw it, it was always up mm-hmm. here in the foremost. Yeah, he, he said for the joy. Say, I, think, I understand what you're trying to say, Rick. In other words, his veil was lifted. Mm-hmm. But not from not from the very beginning, from what I understand. Okay. He still had to make a lot of choices. And at what point 
it was lifted, I don't know. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted. Okay. But it, it's like, it says he grew in knowledge and in favor with man. And, mm -hmm. and like, like little bit by little, he started coming into the understanding. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, of course, when he was in his ministry, he could... He, you he know, had from, to know some by the time he was, what was it, four or five? Mm -hmm. When he was teaching in the, in the synagogue. Yeah. Twelve. He had to have known. I have to be about my father's business, so he knew by then. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't way down, but there was a point where. As Sister Hicks, sometime maybe, she'll tell us. It's something I've always wondered about too. At what point it was, it started to be lifted. But he was. He took our place, so he had to have made the same choices as we did. Right. and keep himself clean and, and holy to be able to be our savior mm -hmm. okay is that clear mm -hmm. you're full no. <laughs> <laughs> going back to lucifer i want to an answer linda's Let's go back to um e ezekiel 28 We're coming down a little bit farther in in time. <laughs> you can call it eternity time. Mm -hmm. But all of this happened. Lucifer walked up and down, chose Jesus showed us the whole the whole plan, put fences around some of them and, and all of this is going on back in eternity, okay? And it says here in the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled thee I'm sorry, twenty eight sixteen. Look at this. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence. They who? Talking of Lucifer. Who could have filled him with violence? Exactly. Father wicked, mother wickedness, and Abaddon filled him with violence, and he sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Mm -hmm. Thou hast cor corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. He's still very wise. That's why he's got the whole world under his hand right now. Mm -hmm. But it's corrupted wisdom. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And it goes on talking about how he filled his sanctuaries by the iniquity and the iniquity of thy traffic. Once again, talks about his trying to sell himself and all. So what really happened? What happened here at this point? Let's go to Isaiah 14. I'll just put it here. I just remembered I have a I have a tape. Took it out of the car though. I have a tape where I, I copied backward masking. God's throne was in the north. At this point. And on one of Neil Diamond's tapes, he's supposed to be real easy going. The, the very first tape somebody gave me, I, I flipped it, right? I copied it backwards and started listening to it. And almost it, there's there's one point that almost all of the tapes have this backward masking mm -hmm. which means they put subliminal things in mm -hmm. he said I'm going again to the north just as clear I'm going again to the north I had a tape copier like they have in Jeff and there was a switch on the back that would copy it backwards mm -hmm. he said I'm going again to the north I said, what? he said what? the backward masking does have stuff on it and then there was others where it said uh, worship the fairest maiden and uh, something about the altar and then also on Neil Diamond's there was a pause and he said let us worship and he starts talking in tongues but he's not worshiping God he's worshiping the devil he just it's real clear I wish I would have put it in the card I found it when I was going through some old tapes how do you back with that how can we back with that flip the tape but 
it's weird. You get a real weird sensation because it's all yeah. yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. goofy. Mm -hmm. I don't suggest it because you. Yeah. yeah. It makes you feel funny after a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Makes you feel real funny. Um, so here was Lucifer on on the holy mountain, tremendously anointed, here by gift. God had placed him there. Tremendous ministry that he had. And God's throne was up here. Okay? And at one point then, something happened to his will. It said his will was twisted, perverted. It got, like we know him now, snaky. Twisted will. And in Isaiah 14, he gave birth to the taproot. Verse 12 it says, How art thou fallen from heaven? And in Ezekiel 28, we saw that God cast him out. Okay? So this is why God cast him out, other than what's explained in, in Ezekiel. He said, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend. So the first thing that happened... He got proud. He gave birth to the pride of Revelation. And the pride of Revelation says, I deserve more. This is the taproot. You get mad because you think you deserve more. You get jealous because you think you deserve more. You get irritated because somebody didn't treat you just like you think you need to be treated. And so Jesus came, John said, and he, he's going to come and his axe is in his hand and he's going to lay the root, the axe to the, to the root. Jesus Christ wants to get this out of us because out of this springs everything else. Everything else. If, you're, if, you, if you really stop yourself in the minute of whatever passion and passion is anger jealousy whatever uh, desire for a new radio anything I deserve more you, you, you catch yourself and you look what you're feeling way down inside mm -hmm. I deserve more I deserve for them to treat me better I deserve that they don't treat me like this every 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 sin theft lying gossip everything we're trying to get something to lift ourselves up to lift ourselves up. He said, I will ascend. He got an idea that it, he, he, his place was too low. He got, a, he got a revelation that he could be the same as God. He got, he got this bright idea all of a sudden that God was being unjust to him, keeping him down here on this, on this low place of the holy mountain, got covering these seeds. And so he said, I will ascend. And the minute we think, I deserve more, we start ascending. And we get up on our high horse and start ruling and reigning. And he said, And then I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So the next thing out of this then came the pride of redemption. He said, I, I deserve more. I know that this place is not where I can be. I'm intelligent. I'm perfect. I'm beautiful, I'm the perfect singer, I'm everything that anybody ever wanted, and I can redeem my situation. I will take my throne, and I will go up. I will exalt my throne to God. So he didn't even wait for anybody else, because he, he knew good and well God wasn't going to take him up. So he got the, he started then rede through redemption, and the, our biggest pride of redemption is anger. We try to redeem out of anger. Either silent anger, pouting for a week with our husband or wife or a mother or father or brothers, not going to talk to each other for two days, or, or screaming fit. There's two types of anger. There's the cold, calculated anger, and then there's the violent, the, the open, the hot anger. But you don't get angry. You don't... 
Mm-hmm. They're both, and they're, and they're both pride, and you're both, and through it you're trying to control the situation. You're trying to take your club and beat people into obedience to your will because you deserve more. And when you do that, you get a perverted satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Why don't we give up our anger? Because it satisfies us. We feel real satisfied. I told them the truth about the situation. We won. Mm-hmm. Is there another statement? But, but in, the, in the silent kind, do you get that? Like it's yeah. yeah, you get that, especially when a, a, a married couple. Because mm-hmm. you're making him suffer. Mm-hmm. 